Hey guys, it's the Pokemon Player. I hope you're doing great. Today we're talking about Yon Mega Vespaquin. Just as a deck, as why it would be good, why it's good in a format like right now, and why it might even be a good choice of something to take maybe to Worlds. So we're just going to be talking about its matchups and how it might work, mm -hmm. and what better background than for this than just some Yon Mega Vespaquin matchups. So um, these are just some games. I'm not going to be commentating them. You can watch them as you listen if you want and enjoy. So, one thing I'd like to talk about is the deck list. Now, I'm not going to explain every card in detail. If you want that, go to the Yan Mega Vespaquin um, video. We're just going to be talking about, you know, um, numbers, about um, theoretical things according to the deck list. First of all, there. what we have to notice is that um, this helps us with the Sylveon matchup, and this right here helps us with the Guard matchup. Um, this deck is so full of Pokemon because Yan Mega is such a thick line that they replace some trainers that we might otherwise have played, you know, otherwise in um, Vespaquin we might have played Acrobike or, um, I don't know, Trainer's Mail or something, whatever. We might have played other trainers that would have complemented it, and here, um, instead we're filling up this space with Pokemon, which still leads us to a very powerful deck, but instead of having items, um, make it powerful. We have this Pokemon make it powerful. So, um, it really does give us, with Garbodor talking about it, we only are running, um, 13 items. Four, oh, eight over here, two over here, and then these three right here. Um, that really helps us also with the Garbodor matchup because we're actually able to cut, um, to actually try to play so few items, um, that Garbodor won't be one-shotting our, uh, Pokemons. For Vespaquin, we'd have to play four items maximum, and for Yan Mega, we'd have to be playing, I mean, the break, we'd have to be playing six items minimum. But the thing is, we've got so few that it is totally feasible, at least in the beginning stages of the game. Because since our deck is so full of Pokemons, of supporters and stuff, when we Ultra Ball, we can Ultra Ball away things that aren't whatsoever items. We can, um, not get rid of our Versus Seekers. Honestly, in the beginning of the game, we can actually one-shot Garboder without Garboder one-shotting us back. And that really, really helps. Um... Yes, as I, as I said, we have 30 Pokemon because we're not at all trying to save space from Pokemon to add in other stuff. Like some decks, some Vespaquin decks only run, say, two Clefkeys, they run other stuff instead, and then you see a four Acrobite somewhere. No, we're not doing this because we're trying to minimize our item count, so we're maximizing every single Pokemon we can put in a uh, Vespaquin. I, except the 30 on Mega Break, I guess. 4 3 on Mega Break, I guess, but, you know. Um, and then, you know, two Shamans, one Lele. All of this is just Pokemons we're trying to get um, into the deck. As you can tell here, we do have um, a lot of supporters, and that's about it. Um... Alright, the next thing we need to talk about is the Sylveon matchup. We only have four energies, and Sylveon actually has two uh, major win conditions. The energy um, denial part of it, where it just tries to discard all the energies you attach, and the um, milling part. And the energy denial, honestly, we're pretty cool with. First of all, because we're attacking a lot with Yan Mega Break instead of attacking with Vespaquin. Yet, the deck allows us to have four plus two, six double colorless energies total, where we're totally not going to be attacking six times with Vespaquin. So even if he once Team Skull grunts us, once Enhance Hammers us, we can still get away, you know, with um, what we've got. We've got way enough double colorless energies, especially considering his first, his only attacks 110 damage, which he doesn't at all use every time, every turn, right? Um, and that doesn't even one-shot a Yon Mega Break, it two-shots a Yon Mega Break, which means that we're two-shotting it with 100 and 100, and it's two-shotting us. I'm still talking about Sylveon, for those of you who didn't follow. Um, so, so honestly, the the strategy as to as for Sylveon is just to um, try to hit as much as possible with Yan Mega over and over, and the cool thing is, um, one of the problems playing Sylveon in regular decks is that if, say, you need to attach two energies, he'll discard an energy every time you attach to the first one. But here we're attaching one, so we attach, we attack, and he won't even have time to, um, you know, I guess, I want to say know what hit him, he won't even have time to discard um, the energies we attach. And even if he does discard the energies we attach, well, Vespaquin's supposed to go all the way down, it's supposed to get knocked out. So in this case, the energy gets um, discarded, and Vespaquin stays, and we don't even lose a prize card. It's much better that way. Um, I mean, we're expecting to lose double colorless energy every turn, since we're expecting the entire Vespaquin to go down. So, let's get started. What is the first thing to talk about? In the format we have today, to make a deck good, it's guard matchup. If, if a deck does not have a good guard matchup, it's not even worth thinking about. Well, I mean, it's not, not worth thinking about, it's just not worth thinking about taking to any major tournament. So, um, Young Mega Vespaquin actually has a very good guard matchup, and we're going to be talking about it right now. 
The first thing it has uh, going for it is that it has one prize attackers. Now, Garb kind of prides itself in the fact that it can, if you're not careful, one-shot EXs, when even if you can one-shot it back, it's only one prize uh, you take, whereas it will take you one prize. Whereas here, in this matchup, even if you play as many items as you want, and he one-shots you, and you one-shot him back, it's still one prize each, and that allows you to at least um, trade evenly in the Garb matchup. That's a, a minimum we can achieve with having one prize attackers. And then, even that being, we can still be really careful about our items. Now, the deck list I'm offering you um, right now has exactly 13 items. Four Ultra Balls, four Versus Seekers, two Choice Bands, and then one Revitalizer, one Rescue Stretcher, and one Special Charge. Those, that's, that's it. And 13 items um, is, is really low. Now, it's, um, it's unfortunately not quite low enough considering how low the HPs of our Pokemons are. But if you can actually control your item count down so you have... So few items in your discard pile that Garboder isn't one-shotting your Yanmega, or even better, that Garboder isn't one-shotting your Vespaquin. You are going to destroy him. Um, can it be done? Well, not always. Sometimes, just to set up, sometimes with just your first Sycamore or something, and your Ultra Ball and something, it's gonna quickly go up to higher than four. The numbers, by the way, are uh, four items Vespaquin doesn't go down, six items Yanmega doesn't go down. But one above each of those numbers, and he is one-shotting those Pokemons. So, as I'm saying, the que the question is, can you control your items low enough that um, Garboder doesn't one-shot you? Well, you still have very, very few items, so it is possible, and that's also an option. That's that's what's so great. On both sides, we have a good option. Either we control our items and Garboder doesn't even one-shot us, or we don't control our items, and even if we don't, we still have an, a, a fair trade with a Garboder, and um, we can attack for free with our Yanmega, whereas he has to find an energy every time. We have Revitalizers, we have Ultra Balls, and we have really thick lines, whereas he just has his 4-4 four, four line, maybe um, um an Ability to Lock Garboder. It, it, it's just so much less consistent for him than it will be for us. We can really take the advan ad advantage of that. Now, um, talking about Ability Lock Garboder. Now, Ability Lock Garboder does, um, does really kind of kill the deck. What is there to say about it? Not much. It just makes the matchup harder. Does it make us lose the matchup? No. No, it doesn't. We can uh, definitely get around this. I've been around a couple of Ability Lock Garboders a couple of times. The only problem with Ability Lock Garboder is it takes down your Unknowns, it takes down your Cluff Keys, and, more importantly, it uh, prevents your Yan Mega from being able to attack. Thus, you have to attack with Vespaquin, and that kind of makes things a little bit harder. Um... It can definitely, definitely be beat. You have to beat it with a Vespaquin, and it might be a little bit difficult, but it can definitely be, um, be dealt with. There's not much to say about that. I'm, I just want to assure you in the fact that it's not a, a full danger. And the thing about Garboder is, he's also going to have Drompas or Espeons, either which uh, are two prize attackers, and you with your Vespaquins, especially late game, you can one-shot those, whereas he, even late game when you've spent all 13 of your items and he's dealing, you know, 260 damage, was that about, yes, 260 damage to attack with double colorless, obviously it's easier for him to keep that going than for us, but we've got Yanmega on our side, and Yanmega attacks for zero energies, which is even better than Garboder, and the fact that it takes three Pokemons is uh, barely really t takeable into account, I, I should say, because, um, because, you know, Forest of Giant Plants makes all that pretty easy. The only problem with Yanmega is the numbers. Um, it deals 100 damage clean with its break attack, and that is, um, that's a little unfortunate because that's 20 damage under Garboder, and a Choice Band doesn't get us there. But we do run Kukui in the deck, so 100 plus a Kukui does one-shot a Garboder, and we also have the second attack, which is uh, 50 plus 70 if he has a tool, which does allow us to one-shot him if he has a tool. Now, um, let me remind you guys that um, Garboder does have a 3 retreat cost, either either Garboder, but um, if it's the ability lock Garboder, then you won't be attacking with Yanmega either way, so, you know. It, 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 we're talking about the regular Garboder, and if he does have a tool or a choice band, because, I don't know, because he had to play the choice band down, I don't know, he probably won't play the choice band down, but the floatstone he might, um, we're then talking about the clean 120 damage, and if you can one-shot the Garboder with one with your Yan Megas, hell, even if he can one-shot your Yan Megas back, you're in an extremely good situation, because your Yan Megas are a lot easier to cycle than his Garboders. We've got Revitalizer, we've got Forest, Trust me, if you can if you can keep that going, 
You're, you've got it great. Now, if you're playing against a good player, he'll be careful he won't put on an item so you cannot one-shot him. Then, you're going to have to spend your Yan Mega attacks, say, on a Drampa. That would be a lot better. Hit 100, then another 100 on a Drampa, and try to kill the Garboders with your Vespaquins in one-shots, because if you're not one-shotting Garboder, you are going to be in a pretty uh, rough situation. Let's just put it this way. But, um, overall... Yan Mega, Yan Mega can do it, and once again, as I said, 100, even if he doesn't have a tool, you just play with Kukui once, and boom, you're one-shotting Garboder with the Yan Mega. Oh, and then whenever he kills the Yan Mega, that's three um, prize cards straight into your deck. Honestly, it's, it's, it's a very, very good option. Um, then, of course, we do still have to talk about other matchups. If, okay, Yan Mega Vespaquin is honestly a pretty good guard counter, I hope I've convinced you of that. The question is, can it win against other decks? Now, um, here I think it might be worth mentioning that I did go to a tournament with this deck, and I actually went 5-0-0. I was, like, first in it before we did top 8, and then we never played top 8. But, um, fact of the matter is, this deck has been tried, and I can tell you it does win a lot of matchups. Now, um, we do have some trouble with, um... Sylveon GX, and we'll, I'll, I'll come back to this in a second, but overall, we do have a very good uh, matchup against most things, and one of the great things uh, is one prize attackers. I'd like to go back to this. Why are one prize attackers so powerful? Because it means that if you clunk, if you're stuck for a little bit, if any of that sort of thing happens, you they take one, they take two prizes from you. In total, you look at your prize cards after you finally got unblocked, and you're still doing great in the game, and you and the... And what's so powerful about the deck is the combination between the strong and quick setup compared to the prizes. Thing is, say say you're stuck, which might happen. You know, you start with, I don't know, a Klefki or something, and for a couple draws, you have nothing. Your opponent doesn't play at end because he sees you're stuck, and he just doesn't doesn't unblock you, right? Um, and then eventually you draw a Sycamore, and off that Sycamore, you play the Sycamore, and you are completely off, because with Shaman, with Ultra Ball, with everything you've got, you can get Vespa Coins, you can get Yan Megas out in one turn and immediately start attacking. And what, you've lost one, you've lost two prize cards, even that you can come back from. I don't know um, exactly what matches will be showcased during this video, but you might notice that exactly happening. A little bit of clunk in the beginning, and then you realize that you can still come back from the game, because it's so slow for your opponent to win. Another great thing about one prize attackers is uh, weakness. Now, weakness is actually one aspect that I kind of dislike about the Pokemon trading card game because in most uh, in most matches when you're playing against your weakness, you don't even stand a chance. I would have rather a weakness have been you know plus thirty plus forty where it would have given the, your weak your opponent a, a, a good advantage, but it wouldn't have given him the win. Whereas right now, if you're playing Sylveon against a metal deck, or if you're playing I don't know a metal deck against a fire deck, or something like that. You are going to get destroyed, don't stand a single chance. And that's what I really like about Vespaquin, because is there a fire deck that's good right now? Yes, there is Volcanion. It's amazing. Turdinator uh, is helping it a little bit. It's a great deck, and just so it is going to be around. But with a, a, a with a deck like Yan Mega, a Vespaquin, even if you do get hit, the strategy is to get hit. The strategy is to get one shot, so it's going to make it a little bit harder on you, but really not too much. Um... We do have also the fact that Yamega is weak to lightning, not to fire, surprisingly. Well, I guess not surprisingly for those of you who play the video game, but uh, for those of us who only play the card game, I find it kind of surprising that a grass type isn't weak to fire. But anyways, Yamega is weak to lightning, Vespaquin's weak to fire, and if you're really scared about weakness, you can switch around with those two. You can start Yamega really strong against the Volcanion until your Vespaquin is strong enough to just be one-shotting everything, right? Um, so it gives you a great edge against weakness as a general rule, but I don't know how to say it, there's, um, I, I don't really know how to describe it, I'm not going to talk about every single deck there is to find in the meta, but if you think about it, maybe, you know, build the deck, try it around, you'll see that you will get the, you win most of the matchups, uh, over the board, really, Yan Mega Vespaquin just really helps you there. Um, now, what, what there is to know is that the strategy of the deck is to hit um, is to hit a maximum at first with just Yan Mega, you know, dealing 100, 100, and 100, and then every time your Yan Mega goes down, well, you know, it's three more Pokemons in the discard pile, and while he was dealing 100, it gave you time to Ultra Ball, to Klefki, to Unknown, to just set up completely and, um, and get things in the discard pile, and so you're hitting with Yan Mega, and then you'll hit with Vespaquin, and that is, uh, rendered completely possible by the fact that they have both free retreat and the combination with force. So you play force. Now you can get Yan Megas and Vespa Vespaquins out. Thus, you can just start hitting really, really fast. Hell, even if you start with an unknown, you attach a double colorless energy, and now you can bring up a whole Yan Mega Break and attack with Yan Mega Break, and I mean, discard the double colorless energy, attack with the Yan Mega Break, and off you go. Um, the deck doesn't run any switching cards, by the way, so because we're only retreating with double colorless energy, 
Why are we only retreating with double colorless energy? Because we don't need that many. We have a total of six, four double colorlesses, one special charge, and that is more than enough considering that we don't won't be giving six prize cards with our Vespa Quins. We will be giving a total of maximum four, and sometimes not, sometimes we'll be discarding them. Sometimes maybe our opponent will take down a shaman. Either way, we don't need all the double colorlesses we have access to. And that is another great advantage about Yan Mega Vespa Quin. Because what I've been saying up to now applies to Vespaquin, you know, but it also applies to Vespaquin Zoroark, applies to Vespaquin with Evolutions, with Zebstrika, anything. But the problem with uh, um, Vespaquin... Alright, so the Sylveon matchup. Um, now, Sylveon is kind of a deck we have a little bit of trouble with. Sylveon against uh, any form of special energies will just do us uh, a lot of harm. You know, he can go search for his enhanced hammers and then otherwise just go for his regular hammers and flip coins until he can take down our double colorless energies. Um, so yeah, unfortunately that's not very good, but apart from that, say we don't attach the double colorless energies to the Vesper Quinn, well that's actually, um, a pretty good matchup, a pretty good theoretical matchup at least, um, uh, for Sylveon, because, um, see, he can't discard any of our energies, the only thing he can discard is our deck, where, uh, Sylveon's kind of plan is to discard energies from your hand, from your Pokemons, etc. We only ever attach one energy on a Pokemon who we're planning on dying either way, so if, say, we put a double colorless energy on the Vesper Quinn so he can hit the Sylveon, even if he kills the double colorless energy, well, we're even happier because we were supposed to lose the double colorless energy and the Vespaquin or when Vespaquin went down, and here he didn't even take down the Vespaquin, all he took down was the double colorless energy. So, and, and then we can also just not attach the double colorless energies, just attack with Yan Mega for a while, and um, when he'll play, say, his team Skull Grunts, what are the chances that we have anything in our hand? Very, very low. We're only running four energies in our entire deck, right? So, um... Overall, we, we have a pretty good theoretical um, um, Sylveon matchup, but uh, uh, objectively, Sylveon actually kind of uh, beats us every once in a while. The problem, one of the real reasons for that is that we burn through a deck pretty fast. I mean, uh, between Shaman, Sycamore, and Unknown, and things like that, we just go through a deck pretty fast. And um, so that just isn't helpful, because since Sylveon's goal is not only to discard energies... And another great thing about the deck is how fast it is, because with the forest and then with the combination of, you know, Sycamore and Shaman, you can actually get, say, a full Yan Mega out really early. Or so if you're playing one of the, the Dark Ray Dragonair decks that have been actually going around, you can, say, maybe even take out a Yan Mega and have the time to Lysander, or if he, you know, left the Dratini active or something, uh, have time to Lysander up the Dratini before he can even attack with the Dratini and um, take down things like that really, really fast, because the deck just kind of takes off super fast, uh, because, you know, with Unknown, you get more cards, with, um, with, with Shaman and Sycamore, I already mentioned, it, it just p can go really, really fast, and, uh, and overall, that has a lot of potential. Uh, one last thing I'd like to talk about is actually Klefki. Now, Klefki is a Pokemon similar to Unknown, a lot worse as far as Vespaquin goes, and of course, there's no questioning taking out Unknown from a deck, uh, of Vespaquin, but, uh, Klefki is arguable. Now, I believe that Klefki is an amazing card in any sort of Vespaquin, Zoroark, Zebstrika deck because your main attacker is Vespaquin and you want to be charging him as fast as possible. And the thing about Klefki is you can attach and wait a turn so it gets discarded, but you can also, if you want, you know, attach it to an unknown or attach it to another Klefki before you attach that Klefki to something. Anyways, have it just be discarded that same turn. And that's what's so um, powerful about Klefki is that you can get it to be really fast in new Pokemon in the discard pile. But the thing is... In Yan Mega Vespaquin, we don't need Pokemons in the discard pile that fast because we're starting by attacking with Yan Mega. That's the entire strategy of the deck. We're and um, though it might seem like a little bit of a closed-minded strategy, it is really plausible, as I just said, because of the free retreat. So you're going to be hitting for the first two, three turns with Yan Megas, and I I always find that by that time I have played an Ultra Ball or I have played a Sycamore or I have played something that um, allowed me to discard the Klefki without having to play it, attach it. Um, what I'm saying is, um, by the time I've played the Klefki, attached the Klefki, waited for the Klefki to be discarded, and then actually had it be useful, had the fact that it be in the discard pile be uh, useful to the game, I could have just discarded it with an Ultra Ball, discarded it with a Sycamore, discarded it with something else, because since we're attacking with Yan Mega first, and not attacking with Vespaquin as fast as possible. And what I'm saying here is, we, I, I am actually thinking of changing these four Klefkis, because we are running four Klefkis in the deck, for something else. Because if we're going to discard them manually, if we don't need its ability to get discarded, then we can use something that might be even more powerful. Say we can use, and um, here's where I'm, I'm, I'm kind of going out of track here, and I'll be um, 
trying these out, and if they work, I'll be putting the deck list online uh, on YouTube, and I'll put the links in the description, but I'm, I've, I had the idea of switching the cleft keys for e either uh, a line of evolutions, one EV, one of each evolution, a 2-2 two -two Zorark line, or um, even maybe Talonflame. Now, Talonflame, I'll talk about in a second, I don't think it's as good of an idea, but I think that Zorark and evolutions are both things to definitely look into, especially the evolutions, because Evolutions are some are the perfect card in a deck like Vespaquin because Vespaquin's a stage one. It's literally amazing if you can completely um for attacking. Only problem is attacks with double colorless energies. So what I said about not scrambling for double colorless energies isn't quite as true. But then again, since it's just an alternate option, you can also not pl you know you can also just not plan an attack any. Anytime you attack with Zorak, it can just replace one time you would have attacked with Vespaquin. Then honestly, it can be uh, another really quick attacker like Yan Mega that can start hitting uh, for a lot of damage. So um, running a 2-2 Zorak instead of the Klefkis might also be an idea. I'll be trying to put make a deck list for that. And then there's uh, the Talonflame idea. Now the Talonflame idea came to me from the fact that um, you know Talonflame, you put one and then the other three you want to discard. What's the perfect deck to discard cards in uh, Pokemon's in? Well, Vespaquin. Um, now, I don't really like the idea that much because, you know, you have to, it means you have to attach a double colorless energy to a Pokemon that'll only ever need one and is only ever dealing 40 damage, but it does add some consistency to the deck, which, as I said, has only 4 Ultra Ball, 4 Versus Seeker, and another 5 items, but that's the only uh, consistency cards. Then it's got 4 Sycamore, 1 N. The deck isn't extremely consistent, so it can sometimes clunk a little bit, so uh, Talonflame would definitely help remedy that. But the problem with that is, since we're playing 4 Unknown, 4 Yanma, 4 Combi, um, the chances of starting with Talonflame are actually, unfortunately, low. Um, also, it would mean, um, it would just mean attaching a double colorless energy somewhere. I think I wouldn't like to put a double colorless energy. But then again, it does also have free retreat, which is, uh, something we definitely like in a deck with so much free retreating, right? And, um, well, yeah, that's that. Also, I'd like to say again about the Evolution Zorark thing, um, that both of them uh, reduce our amounts of false starts. Now, um, you know, because in, in the in either case, it would have been four basics, all four Klefkis, and in Zorark, we only have two basics now, two Zoras, which are both good basics, and um, with Evolutions, we also have, we only have one basic, the other three allow you to mulligan back and maybe draw a Kombi or a Yanma, so it's all that much better that um, you won't be starting with Klefkis with this. Um... Finally, one last thing, Zorark, um, wood is generally played with Floatstone, so you can stand in and stand out, right? But, um, we're definitely not playing Floatstone, we don't have space anymore for any Floatstones in the deck, so maybe Zorark just isn't the one to play here, but, um, I, overall, I think it might, it might have some, it might have some potential. So, you know, maybe look into that, see what you like, look at the lists, and, um, also maybe like and comment, uh, to tell me whether or not you like the idea, what you think you could change, that would only be in the comments, of course, but, um, you know, just so I can have some feedback on a video like this one. And, you know, like if you liked it, subscribe if you want to, and have a good day!